All right, so now let's talk about chromosomes in the cell cycle. So here you see a bunch of chromosomes down here in this GIF right in here on the bottom left-hand side. And so these chromosomes, uh, right now they're just single chromosomes. We'll see when they replicate, you'll actually see uh, two of them. And so, yeah, these are the chromosomes. And this right here is the cell cycle. Y'all, the way we have a life cycle, the cells also have a cycle. And uh, you can see right here, it starts with this, uh, let's see, the G1 then S, then G2, and then it goes through mitosis. And we'll look at all of this in a little bit more detail. All right, so here you go. You have this uh, DNA right here. And so this should look familiar, right? This double uh, helix right here. And uh, as you see right there, it kind of looks like a piece of thread, but uh, this is where you see it as chromatin, right? It's what they call diffuse. It kind of looks like thread or like spaghetti. And before DNA starts, to, gets ready to, to uh, replicate it actually has to thicken up right here into this chromosome and the reason the way it does that is this thread like thing starts to wrap around these things called histones and these histones kind of like spool that you wrap thread around you're able to do that and so as it wraps around the histone the histones start wrapping up tighter and tighter and the the dna starts wrapping up tighter and tighter and it condenses into what you have here this chromosome so this kind of X-shaped looking thing right here, this is a chromosome. And it's important to remember that it's got to double up like this because eventually it's going to separate right down the middle right here. I'll just try to get that down the middle. All right, so it's going to separate right down the middle and then half is going to go into a cell over here and then half of the DNA is going to go into a cell over here. All right, so again, this is a DNA, and this is why it has to wrap up into this thicker, condensed structure called a chromosome. And when you look at a chromosome, we'll learn about sister chromatids, but when they're connected uh, with this central mirror right here, this guy, the central mirror, this is what you call a sister chromatid, right? And we'll look at that in more detail. So let me get this out of the way. Introduction to chromosomes. All of a cell's DNA is called its genome. Right, so this genome contains all of the instructions for a cell slash organism's survival and function. A typical human cell has about three meters of DNA. Right, so a meter is about from your outstretched uh, finger to, the, to your nose. That's about a meter, so three of those. Right, and there's actually some experiments where you can extract DNA from things like a banana, and you can actually see that without a microscope. Right, the DNA. And so the DNA is packaged into chromosomes. So again, yeah, when you're talking about the genome, if you're talking about the human genome, that's basically all of the, the uh, DNA in the human. And so uh, the Human Genome Project mapped the humans, uh, a human's genome, right? And so that's why they call it the Human Genome Project, because they were actually able to map the entire human genome, right? So, and remember that it is packed into chromosomes, which we saw right here, this structure right here is a chromosome. And so here we go again, but this is important to remember right here what a homologous chromosome is. So homologous chromosomes, the pairs of chromosomes that exist in sexually reproducing species, right? So here you have an example of homologous chromosomes. And the reason why they are related to sexual reproducing species is because let's say that this blue one here came from the father, and let me go ahead and put this here. Let's say that this blue one here came from dad, and this uh, purplish one over here came from mom. And so here is mom's chromosome, and here is dad's chromosome. And so these homologous chromosomes, again, one came from the mother, one came from the father. Here you see the one from the dad, here you see the one from the mom. And so remember, y'all, whenever you're talking about homologous chromosomes, these right here have not replicated. Remember, to replicate DNA means to make a copy of itself. Right, this one is just the one, right? You just see one right here. But if you look, this arrow says DNA is replicated. After replication, it goes from one chromosome to this other chromosome right here. But when they're connected by this structure right here, this central mirror right there, if they're connected, then these are called sister chromatids, right? So right here, you see these are connected right here. So this is a sister chromatid with this one right here, right? These are sister chromatids because they're connected by a centromere. This blue one and this purplish pink one are not sister chromatids because these two are not connected by a centromere, right? But these two blue ones are, so they are sister chromatids. And this pinkish purple one, this one, these are sister chromatids because they're connected by the centromere. But remember, they are homologous because it basically is saying in each pair of homologous chromosome, one chromosome comes from each parent. 
They are identical except the X and Y, the sex chromosomes. But they're identical because let's say that this right here, this chromosome has the gene for eye color, then that means that this one is from the dad, but the one from the mom's chromosome right here is also the one for eye color, right? And so that is why they're homologous because they have the same genes on there, but one is from the mom and one is from the dad. So again, like this right here could be the uh, hair color, so like brown hair, and that's coming from the dad, but this one right here could be red hair coming from the mom. Right, but they both are the color, the the gene for hair color, and so that's why they are homologous because they have the same genes, but one is from the dad and one is from the mom. And then remember, if they have this central mirror right here, they are sister chromatids. So genes, as I was just saying, genes, just a little piece of DNA that codes for a specific trait. We say specific trait, y'all, but it codes for a protein, and that protein leads to that trait, right? So it could be the protein for straight hair or curly hair. Right. If you have a certain protein, then it leads to uh, sorry, if you have a certain gene, then it leads to something like straight hair. If you have another kind of gene, it could lead to curly hair. Or in this example right here, it could either mean that one gene codes for uh, brown hair and the other gene codes for red hair. Right? And so the locus, locus, location, they kind of sound they start with the same letters. The locus is just a specific physical location of a gene or other DNA sequence on a chromosome. It's kind of like a street address, right? So you would say that the uh, gene is linked here in like the P arm area or the gene is linked in the Q arm area. And that's just telling you that's where it is, right? That is the location, right? So whenever you think of locus, think location because the locus is the location of a gene, right? So locus, location. So here you go, y'all. We have all of these homologous chromosomes. Remember, homologous chromosomes mean that they have the same kind of gene on there, but one comes from the mom and one comes from the dad, right? So the only difference is going to be right here in the sex chromosomes. And if you have an X and a Y, that means that it is a male. If it were XX, that would be female, right? So the karyotype is just the number and visual appearance of the chromosomes in the cell nuclei of an organism. Basically, what it's saying is these are all of the homologous chromosomes lined up together from one to 23, right? We have 46 chromosomes in our body, but they are uh, coming remember, half from a mother, half from our father. And so here you have basically all 46 and they're broken down into 23 pairs, right? One through 23. And the 23rd pair is the sex chromosomes, right? XY for male, XX for female. And so homologous chromosomes, before a cell divides, the chromosomes copy themselves, which is known as DNA replication, right? So here you see that happening right here. It's going from one strand into two different strands because it's copying itself. And so the two copies are called chromatids or sister chromatids and are attached to one another by a centromere. So these right here, again, are homologous chromosomes. Let's say this right here, this line right there is the gene for eye color. Right. And so then that means that's a gene for eye color. But then that means that the dad could have a gene color for a gene for brown eye color and the mom could have a gene for blue eye color. Right. And so that's what they're saying right here. Right. That's what homologous chromosome is. But when it replicates, it goes from one right here, this one right here into two right here. Right. So it's replicating. And remember, it's important that you know that eventually this DNA is going to split right down the middle. Right, it's going to cut, you're going to cut it right down the middle right here. And then half of the DNA is going to go over here to this cell on this side. And then this DNA is going to go to a cell over here on this side. Same thing with this right here, right? This one is going to get split right down the middle and half is going to go one way and half is going to go the other way. And then uh, another reminder, we already talked about this, but remember if it's got this central mirror right here, then that means that if they are connected and let me kind of get rid of some of this other stuff. Right, so that means if they're connected by these central mirrors, these are sister chromatid. So this blue one is a sister chromatid to this other blue one, and this pink one is a sister chromatid to this other pink one. These right here are not sister chromatids. They are not because these are not connected right here by a central mirror, right? Only if they're connected by a central mirror are they sister chromatids. Right, so the chromosome number varies by species. The number of chromosomes in us are 46 in a somatic cell. So a somatic cell is pretty much every cell in your body except for the gametes, which are the sex cells or sperm or egg cells, 
right? A somatic cell in an organism is known as diploid or 2N. Diploid, 2N, and 46 pretty much all mean the same thing, right? When you're talking about gametes, you only have half that number. That means you have 23 chromosomes, right? And it makes sense, y'all, because you have 46 chromosomes in your, your body, in your, sorry, you have 46 chromosomes in your cells, but if your cell undergoes meiosis, which we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, it's basically going from 46 chromosomes to 23. Because if you are male, that means you have to have 23 chromosomes in your gamete. If you're a female, you have 23 chromosomes in your gamete. And so when the male gamete and the female gamete meet, right, when a sperm meets an egg cell, then it goes back to 46, right? It fertilizes that egg and you go back up to 46. But if you're talking about 46 cells, sorry, 46 chromosomes in a cell, you're talking about somatic cells, and those are diploid, which means 46, and it's 2N, which means two pairs of 23, which is also 46. I know it's a lot. This picture kind of breaks it down a little bit, right? So gametes, they only have 23 chromosomes, and they're known as haploid or N cells, right? So again, haploid is an N. This you'll find it in a sperm or an egg. And diploid is 46, and these you'll find it in our somatic cells right here, which are pretty much all our other cells in our body. So when you're talking about uh, when hom homologous pairs or sister chromatids, they usually separate in what's called uh, mitosis but uh, and meiosis. But what happens sometimes is these, they don't separate, right? They're supposed to separate. This is what I was saying is that some will go into one cell over here, and some will go into another cell over here. Right. And you see that right there. But sometimes they don't separate from each other and they get uh, stuck with each other. And so instead of having this, this is what you're supposed to have N and N, you end up with one that has N plus one, which means you have three chromosomes, one, two, three. And then this N minus one means you have one less chromosome than you're supposed to. Right. You're supposed to have two. But if they don't separate in this cell, you're going to end up with three. In this cell, you're going to end up with one. And if this happens, y'all, if you end up with an extra chromosome, they call it trisomy. It's also known as Down syndrome, right? So Down syndrome, trisomy 21, means that there are three copies of the 21st chromosome. One, two, three. You see right here, one, two, three. It's because they didn't separate. When you see the word disjunction, disjunction means to separate. But if it says non-disjunction, that means that they did not separate right here. And so you end up with three of them. And that's where you get this right here. Tri, remember, tri means three. It means you have three copies of this 21 chromosome. One, two, three. Right? And so again, that leads to Down syndrome. So cell division, we've been talking about this, right? Cell divides in order to repair or replace cells that die. Right? And this is just what happens throughout a cell's life cycle. It's born, it divides, and then it dies. And so it also creates new cells and development of a multicellular organism that begins as a zygote. Right? So basically, you can see right here, a zygote is just a fertilized egg. Right? Whenever you see the word zygote, it means that the sperm just got inside the egg, and then the egg starts to divide, and it turns into a new, uh, it starts turning into a baby. Right? So right there, you see the sperm go in, and then the cell starts to divide. It goes from one cell to two from two to four, from four to eight, from eight to 16, 16 to 64, and it just keeps dividing and dividing and dividing, right? That is what cell division means. It means for your cells to divide. And so we talked about the cell cycle, right? The, the cells have a life cycle. They are born, they grow, they eat, they drink, they release waste, they divide, and then eventually they should die, right? So the cell cycle uh, has five stages. And those include the G1 phase. So here you see G1, the cell grows, right? That's what's happening right there in the G1 phase. S phase, the DNA is copied, right? So S stands for synthesis. DNA is synthesized. That means you make more DNA. Remember that. That's going to be important. DNA replicates in the S phase. And then in the G2 phase, this is prep for mitosis. So mitosis is about to start to happen. And we'll learn about that in a second. But basically, the cell prepares to divide. Right, so it continues to grow. It doubles up on, on everything. It's got that double of the uh, DNA, but it also needs more mitochondria. If it's a plant cell, it needs more chloroplast. It needs more Golgi bodies, all of those things, right? It needs more of that for, uh, for it to split into two different cells. And then mitosis occurs, and that's basically the nucleus dividing, right? So this is mitosis right here. You see these chromosomes, they're lined up in the middle. These spindles, they push them right to the middle. And when they're lined up in the middle, after that, they get separated. And then you see the cell 
the nucleus turns into two. And right now the cell is about to divide into two different cells, right? When the cell actually splits into two, that is known as cytokinesis, right? The cell splitting into two different cells. And so this right here, you see mitosis, and then eventually the cell divides right here. So most of a cell's life cycle is spent in interphase. Interphase, you see, is all of this. Interphase includes the G1, the S phase, and the G2 phase, right, which you see right here. The G1 growth phase, DNA replication happens right here in the S phase, and then the general cell process, it continues to grow right here in the G2 phase. So most of its life is spent in interphase, but then right here, it'll spend some of its life in mitosis, where it goes from right here, what we saw in this gif right there right that's mitosis happening and then here cytokinesis is when that cell actually splits from one cell into one two cells that's supposed to be a number two right so that is what happens in cytokinesis the cell splits into two cells when cells lose their ability to regulate the cell cycle so this is what you call a tumor cell Tumors are what can lead to cancer, right? They're the result of uncontrolled cell division. So they are big lumps of cells. And those cells, it basically means that a cell is supposed to die, but sometimes cells don't die. They just keep growing and growing and growing. And when the cells keep growing like that, they lead to things called tumors, right? Tumor cells are the result of uncontrolled cell division. They are just a lump of cells. Benign tumors are not that harmful because they just stay in one place, right? If you have a benign tumor, it's staying in one place. But if someone has a malignant tumor, that means that it is harmful because it travels throughout the body and it can spread throughout the body, right? And so cancer kills because a tumor makes essential parts like the lung, the heart, et cetera, stop working, right? Because of all those extra uh, cells growing everywhere, all those cells have to be given blood and nutrients and things like that. And so instead of giving it to parts like your lung and your heart, the, those uh, parts that are supposed to be feeding your lungs and your heart are actually feeding tumors. Right, so that's why they stop working right. And so here you see mitosis. It's a type of cell division, right? The cell is dividing, it's going from one cell into one, two cells, right? So it's going from one to two cells right here. And it's for growth, development, and repair, right? So if you cut yourself or you break your arm, you need to heal the cut, you need to heal your, heal your broken arm. And so that's what does it is mitosis grows a scab uh, by dividing cells, or it can help repair your bones by creating tissue or bone tissue that helps repair. If you're growing, if you're going from a baby to an adult, you also need mitosis for that, right? That's what accounts for all those extra cells. It creates identical cells. So if you're going from, you're healing your arm or healing a broken bone, you want it to be the same kind of tissue, right? If you're healing a broken bone, you want more bone tissue to grow there. So it makes sense that it's for identical cells. Right. And the four stages right here include prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Especially remember these right here for the uh, final exam, right? These will be important. And so that right there, meiosis, was just for growth development and repair, right? Creating identical cells for growth development and repair. But now you have meiosis. And so meiosis, remember, this is what mitosis looked like right here. Meiosis looks very similar, but there are actually two rounds of that, right? In one second, let me just fix this right here. Sorry, I uh, meant to fix this before, and I guess I did not. All right, well, I just wanted you to focus on this image right here of meiosis. Very similar, but instead of having the one, let me just kind of drag this out because it's bugging me, it's just kind of being hidden under there. There we go. Right, and so instead of having just one uh, process right here, you have two different processes. It goes from one, two different processes. It goes from one cell to two cells. And then these two cells right here end up turning into these four cells, right? So meiosis is sexual, which means that it is creating sperm or eggs, right? And sperm or eggs, a fancier name for that is gametes. And in the male, it's sperm. And in the female, it's eggs. But this is what is so important. Remember this, because this is going to come back uh, later. What is so important about meiosis is it leads to genetic variation, right? Through crossing over, that is one of the most important steps of, of, uh, in, of meiosis is that it leads to crossing over. So crossing over right here, what you see is when they cross over each other, 
this is let's say this these top ones are from the dad and these bottom ones are from the mom but when they lean across each other and then they separate some of the dad's chromosome gets stuck on the mom's dna and some of the mom's dna gets stuck on the dad's chromosome and so that leads to variation right and you want variation you know in biology we really want that variation because if you think about it, it if everything is the same like everything in a species is exactly the same if a disease comes and wipes out one of those members of the species then if they're all the same, everything is going to get wiped out, right? That's why you saw like during COVID that some people, they got really sick, right? Some people unfortunately passed away and some people they got it and nothing even happened. And that's because of that genetic variation, right? If everyone had been exactly the same and it affected, COVID affected everyone and it was lethal to one person, that means everyone of the population would, uh, would go extinct eventually, right? That, that species. And so that's why it's very important to have genetic variation. Genetic variation is very important. And that happens through crossing over, that happens through independent assortment, which is basically just saying that no matter how these line up on the left side, these on the right could line up however. And so that's independent assortment. It's just uh, kind of like flipping a coin for each set of homologous chromosomes because uh, whatever like happens on one side of the cell with one pair of chromosomes, the pair beneath that don't necessarily have to line up in the same order. Right, and then random fertilization just means that a sperm could reach any of those eggs randomly, and no matter which egg it reaches, it's going to fertilize that egg, and there's going to be some variation. Right, so that is very important. Y'all remember genetic variation through crossing over. It starts with one cell and ends with four genetically different cells. Right, so you start with the one cell right here. Let me just kind of circle this one. You start with the one cell right here, and then you end up right here with these cells. You have one, two, whoops, three, four. All right, so you go from one cell to four genetically different cells, right? And so if this is a male, these two would turn, these four would turn into sperm cells. If this was a female, only two of them get turned into eggs. Whoops, let me go back to the slideshow. And so it starts with one cell and ends with the four. That's what we just saw. And genetic variation gives a species a better chance of surviving. And we talked about that, right? If everyone is identical and one of disease wipes one uh, organism out, then all the organisms are going to get wiped out if they're all the same, right? That's why genetic variation is very much valued in biology. And here you go. But again, basically the same steps as mitosis, but there are twice as many steps and instead of creating the same identical cell it creates four random or genetically uh genetically different cells 